Hey everybody, welcome to another Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan, and today we're gonna to be talking all about what gauge speaker wire for my 70 volt system do I need? All right, so we've talked about um, wire for 70 volt systems before in the past, but we're gonna do a little bit deeper dive on it. Um, so you guys probably have heard a lot about the gauge of speaker wire. Speaker wire is measured in AWG, which stands for American Wire Gauge, uh, which is a metric for um, understanding the thickness of the wire itself. So the lower the number, the thicker the wire is. So I've got a diagram here. It's not to scale. 12 gauge wire is not this big around. Uh, but this kind of illustrates to us what we're looking at. You know, 12 gauge, then 14 gauge, 16 gauge, 18 gauge, we're gradually getting smaller. Uh, on down to 20 gauge, 22, and then even like 24 gauge, like you might see in some network cabling. So bigger the number, uh, smaller the wire, lower the number, bigger the wire. So um, what do we need for a 70 volt system? Uh, well, basically first we wanna make sure that we don't run too thin of a wire really long distances. Otherwise, um, we're not gonna get all the wattage from the amplifier to the speaker and therefore it's not gonna get loud enough um, or it's gonna have a signal degradation. So uh, does that mean we always need super big wire uh, in a 70 volt system? Do we always need to go with 12 gauge? Uh, I've got 12 gauge right here to show you. You know, this is 12 gauge versus this is 16 gauge, drastically smaller. This is 18 gauge, way thinner. So do we always need to go with 12 gauge? This is all weather 12 gauge. Uh, the answer is no. You know, it's all about, um, you know, the distance that we're running and how much wattage we're running through it. So typically in a 70 volt system, 16 gauge is the ideal wire for most applications. Uh, reason being, um, 16 gauge feels pretty significant. Uh, you know, it's, it's thick enough to maneuver. You can pull this through a conduit if you need to. Um, and also it's got, enough, um, it's got enough conductors in it to where we can still get a decent amount of wattage to the speakers themselves. So uh, there is a chart from the wire manufacturer, Belden, that we're gonna reference down below uh, in the comments um, that you can take a look at uh, that I wanna mention um, that basically calculates for us that a 16 gauge wire in a 70 volt system can run almost 10,000 feet before we incur even a three decibel loss of volume, which that's the smallest change in volume that our ears can perceive, which is basically a 50% loss of wattage. 10,000 feet we can run this before we get even a perceived drop of three decibels. Um, so that's almost two miles on this thin wire that's relatively cost effective in a 70 volt system. If we step that up to 14 gauge, we can run that almost 15,000 feet, almost three miles before we get a, a th three dB, dB drop in volume. If we use 12 gauge, that's almost 24,000 feet we can run this before we get a three dB drop in volume. So in 70 volt, very, very efficient because of the nature of the electrical signal, which allows us to use thinner gauge wire and run it very long lengths. So that has to do with the impedance itself. But if I was to take, this same 16 gauge wire to run a four ohm speaker, instead of a 70 volt speaker, I'm gonna run a four ohm speaker, like in a gym system or something like that, I can only run this wire 185 feet before I get a 50% drop in volume or a 3 dB loss. So that's why we design our gym systems and our stadium systems many times with the thicker 12 gauge stuff, bigger round wire, rather than going with the 16 gauge. So, uh, you know, with this 12 gauge wire, I can run this almost 500 feet before I get a 3 dB vo uh, drop in um, volume. So, um, it's important to know how the thickness of the wire impacts the, uh, the wattage in the system as well. Uh, you'll also find that of the wires that we normally quote, um, these are going to be stranded rather than solid core. Solid core is what you're going to find in the walls in your house most of the time. This is stranded wire, which means I can take this and actually break apart the individual leads. Reason why that's good is it allows the wire to be bendable, easier to go in conduit, also keeps us from breaking it that way. Um, it also uh, is a little bit more maneuverable um, and allows us to you know, fit into a Euro block nice and easily, also allows us to wrap around terminals, things like that. Um, so uh, we also recommend going with twisted pair wire. I've stripped back the um, 
outside gray jacket on this wire so you can see a little bit further back. You'll see that these two strands of wire, the black and the red, the black and the white in some case, actually roll over on themselves. Um, the reason why we're doing that is that actually prevents electromagnetic interference. I am not an electrical engineer, so uh, this is a designed to be an entry level uh, conversation in this conversation. Um, so uh, that allows us to keep from getting crosstalk, or um, you know, I've even heard stories of long wires uh, picking up um, uh, FM radio stations over twisted, untwisted pairs. So um, the uh, the side by side wire is kind of the al other alternative versus this twisted pair. You might find that in some home entertainment packages. Once again, not recommended because it doesn't have this uh, this twist in it, which helps to avoid um, picking up some of that noise and some of that interference that I mentioned. So the last question that comes up often is, do I use shielded or unshielded wire? We generally recommend unshielded wire uh, when running for speaker wire, uh, like in a 70 volt system. That's because with a shield, there can be what's referred to as the capacitive effect by having a shield on the wire itself, which ne negatively impacts the wattage of the system, which can cause even more issues. Also, should that shield get connected for any reason, you can really have some problems um, in that you then have actual line wattage running through the shield of a system. So to kind of explain what I'm talking about there, we do use, um, we do use things like uh, shielded wire for inputs, like plugging in a microphone. Um, this is a bare wire cable on one side, microphone cable on the other. You'll see positive, negative, shield, three conductors. A shield acts like a ground. Um, this is being plugged into an input, so it's going to be ramped up you know, with additional 30 to 60 gain uh, decibels of gain. Um, so we want this shield there to make sure that when this wire is running through the wall or uh, wherever it's going, that it's not picking up any buzz or hum from fluorescent lights, other electrical cables, things like that. But speaker wire that's not going to be amplified that way, that already has wattage on it, we don't want a shield because we don't want that shield to be hooked up and ca potentially cause a short, potentially cause uh, the capacitive uh, effect issue that I mentioned. So instead of three wires on speaker wire, we've got two wires instead, unshielded. So if you're looking for the short answer on speaker wire to use for your 70 volt system, the very short answer is 16 gauge, two conductor, stranded wire. That is the answer most of the time, uh, but we have a lot of other variations we can do. Um, we're not gonna talk too much about it here, but depending on your location, depending on your application, if it's new construction or previous construction, um, you may also need a plenum, uh, plenum rated wire or maybe even burial grade wire, uh, but the plenum rating designation is kind of in line with uh, fire code in your area, construction code, um, and that kind of thing. So uh, we can help you with that as well. Just uh, reach out to us. We'll talk to you about it a little bit more. Uh, drop me a comment down below. Let me know you're watching, guys. Click like, click subscribe, and take a look at our website.